In today's video, I'm recapping our three-day trip up to Kentucky to experience the Bourbon Trail. It's something that has been high on our to-do list for a while, and it absolutely lived up to the hype. In total, we tried over 45 different bourbons and whiskeys, visited a bunch of distilleries for tours and classes, visited various bourbon-themed restaurants and bars, and we even waited in the snow and 22 degrees for some highly sought after bourbon. Hopefully you'll learn a few tips and tricks in this video for planning your own trip because it's absolutely worth it. Day one, we based ourselves in the Frankfurt area and checked out Woodford Reserve, Buffalo Trace, and had lunch and dinner in downtown Frankfurt. Woodford Reserve, especially their double oaked, is one of our group's favorite bourbons. So going into the trip, we knew we had to make a stop at that distillery. And that would be tip one I would have. When planning your trip, go to your local bourbon bar, Go to your local liquor store, try various bourbons, some that you have heard of before, try some new ones. We tried a bunch before planning our trip. We found some distilleries that we absolutely never heard of before and we knew we needed to visit after trying that bourbon. There's just too many distilleries to pack into one trip, so you're going to have to narrow it down. And that's my recommendation on how to do it. Also, when you're planning your trip, one thing that we did that worked out well was planning a different experience at all the big distilleries we visited. We felt that doing the same how bourbon is made type tour, each one would get very repetitive. At Woodford, we started our visit in their cocktail lounge with a class prior to them opening for the day, which meant drinking old fashions at 10 a.m. on day one of our trip. It was a great way to start things off. A bartender walked us through and made various old fashions using their key bourbons that are generally available for retail. It was great to not only try old fashioned recipes, such as one with honey, one with chocolate bitters in it, one had ginger, but it was also a great way to kind of compare their flagship bourbon lineup. After our cocktail class, we hung around their tasting area, which actually ended up being one of our favorites of the trip. It was cozy, it was elegant, what you'd expect from Woodford Reserve. They have seasonal cocktails, as well as tastings and flights of some of their distillery exclusives including ones that are currently no longer available for purchase, such as the infamous Double Double Oat. We did a flight of the Brandy Finish, the Toasted Oak, and the Double Double. All were excellent, with the Toasted Oak being the winner for me, and even though $75 was very steep for a flight, trying the Double Double was on my bourbon bucket list. And hey, you got to keep the glasses too. Later in the video, I'll show you where we found some of those at much cheaper tasting prices. Afterwards, we headed across the street to the gift shop, which was equally as nice, had some really high quality merchandise. Some of those t-shirts were really awesome. They had all their core bourbon products available for purchase. And that day they actually released this personal selection bourbon picked by some of the folks that worked in the bottling area. So we had to pick that up, of course. And like every other spot we found on the bourbon trail, they offered bourbon chocolates with their bourbon in it. Awesome. Unfortunately, it was raining pretty hard at this point, so we didn't get a chance to explore the grounds anymore. So back to Frankfurt for lunch. We went to Goodwood for lunch, which is in downtown Frankfurt. Nice little place right on the water, though it was raining that day, with quite the extensive bourbon tasting menu at pretty reasonable prices. They also have some of their own spirits, which I ended up getting one of those to try. And the food was excellent. Can't recommend this place enough. Giant pretzel, the chicken finger and fries or chips rather, lunch special was really good. And like I said, they brewed their own beer and they have some of their own spirits. So neat little place to check out. Next stop, Buffalo Trace. One of the highlights of our trip because they just know how to do everything right here. As we're pulling onto this beautiful campus of a very old but also very new kind of distillery, Yes, it was pouring, pouring rain. A couple things to talk about. Their tours are free and they include a tasting, which is awesome. However, they book up very, very quickly, almost minutes after they are released, for at least the more popular ones when they're released months out. So plan accordingly, get online, set that alarm. Here's an overview of kind of the entire property. We're in that parking lot in the middle there. We're about to walk over to the visitor center to get started on our hard hat tour. That tour is probably the most recommended tour as we did our research. And I can see why it's limited to a small little group because they take you into the inner workings of the distillery process. And some of these buildings date back 
100 years plus. So they're very small. We had to wear ear protection in some of these. You really get up close and personal with how it's made. And that small group allows your tour guide to be very informative and personable. Highly, highly recommend this tour. It was, it was just really cool to be this close. And at some points you're, you're three, four stories up on these grates looking straight down. It's pretty wild. So definitely recommend this. And it ends of course with complimentary tasting of some of their core product lineups. Nope, you're not tasting Pappy Van Winkle or Blanton's, but you do get to taste some of their more well-known products. Tried Weller for the first time and that ended up being my favorite. And of course you got a bourbon ball. We'll talk about how you can buy bourbon at the gift shop in a moment, but just want to show you off all the stuff they had, something for all their bourbon brands, including Pappy Van Winkle. Good morning for day two, and we're back at Buffalo Trace for their allocated bottle release in the morning. It is 22 degrees. That is all ice on the ground. This line is huge. Maybe 100, 150 people. You can see there's like painted Q, uh, Q markers on the ground. And this is because just a few minutes, minutes ago they announced today's release is Blanton's. We'll talk a little bit more about how they do these releases. As you can probably guess by the line, this is a big deal. Every day at 8 a.m. they post on their website what special bottle they will have. Limited to one person, per 90 days. You won't find Pappy Van Winkle or some of their other super high-end stuff Buffalo Trace does, but each day they randomly, keyword random, decide to put out normal prices, another keyword, either Blanton's, Weller Special Reserve, E.H. Taylor, or Eagle Rare. Products that are hard to find in most states, and here they sell Blanton's for $60. You'd probably find it no less than $150 $200 if you do find it near you. To their credit, it's super well organized. The line moved fast once it opened, plenty of employees directing where to go. This wasn't some big Black Friday gone wrong. This is a well organized event. And once inside, I've never seen so much Blanton's in one spot. No one knows what the release will be until that morning, and it's limited, normally gone by noon. So if you have a tour later in the day, take note, it might be gone by the time you get there. After we got our bottles, it was onwards to Louisville. We started at Feast Barbecue, a great local barbecue joint just outside downtown. They have bourbon slushies, barbecue tacos. What else could you ask for? Next up, just a short walk from Feast was Evergreen Liquors, and this ended up being one of the highlights of the trip for me. It's a liquor store with a tasting bar with close to a hundred of the hardest to find in rare bourbons and spirits. Some of the best prices that you'll find for a pour, especially in Louisville. Pause the video to check out the prices for yourself. We tried Weller 12 and then of course had to try Pappy Van Winkle, which yes, at $75 for a small pour is a lot, but it's probably the cheapest spot you'll find in town. So if you're like me and Pappy, trying Pappy is on your bourbon bucket list, you're going to want to go to Evergreen. Also, it's just a great liquor store with lots of options at reasonable prices and you can browse with the drink in your hand. They do have locations all over the state, so even if you're not coming to Louisville, look them up. Also in the same area was Please and Thank You, a highly rated bakery. Their derby bar and cookies were awesome a dog shop that sold a bunch of great bourbon dog merch. So of course I had to spoil my dog and get him some puppy Van Tinkle. Our one night in Louisville, we stayed at the Moxie Hotel, which was just one street back from Whiskey Row area, walking distance to all the distilleries. Highly recommend. And even their lobby had a really great bourbon selection with some harder to find stuff at pretty reasonable prices. Overall, the rooms were nice, kind of quirky, a little small, but exactly what we needed. We then moved the mile or so into the downtown area where there's a bunch of quote unquote distilleries within walking distance. Now, these aren't your typical distilleries like the big factories you saw with like Buffalo Trace. These are more so fancy gift shops with tasting bars and some maybe some small tours that kind of explain how bourbon is made. 
let's start with the Evan Williams experience. Now on the third floor, they have a really nice bar that has some cocktails as well as pours of some of their harder to find stuff. Pause the video there if you wanted to see the full menu. We ended up getting a smoked old fashioned that included a cinnamon stick, a really nice drink on a cold, cold day. Now next on the second floor, they have a pretty big gift shop with some cool stuff. And if you ask nicely, they might just let you taste some stuff for free. While I'll show you the full Bardstown distillery at their site in Bardstown in a few minutes, they did open a small little outpost in Louisville. High-end gift shop, really cool bar, classroom for various functions, and we were able to try an exclusive just for that location to commemorate its opening. Very nice stop. Nearby is the Louisville Slugger Museum. We didn't have time to check it out, but if you were interested in it, it is in the heart of downtown Louisville within walking distance of everything I'm showing you. Also nearby is the Fraser Museum. They build themselves as the official starting point of the Bourbon Trail. They do offer tastings and some other stuff. They had quite a bit of bourbon for sale as well, but we mainly popped in there real quick to pick up some Bourbon Trail souvenirs. They had some really fun t-shirts and other memorabilia that wasn't just distillery specific, but also just talked about the Bourbon Trail overall. Worth the stop to pop in, especially if you liked a good t-shirt. Our next stop in downtown Louisville was Old Forester. Now this is another one that's not really a distillery, though they might do some small stuff on site. It's essentially a large gift shop with some really cool visuals that offers tours and classes. Definitely worth stopping in just to take a look at their giant gift shop area where there's this multi-story still. Really, really neat. They also do have a bar on site called George's. Now, this is a place where you'd, of course, be able to find their normal uh, products. They also had some unique cocktails, including a Jimmy Buffett themed one. A little interesting for a 20 degree day. But we got to try some of their more unique bourbons and really liked the 1910 that ended up being one of my favorite bourbons of the trip. Now, no reservations are needed, but it is a very small bar, so you might have to end up standing at the bar or crowding on a small table. Also worth noting, most of these places are closed by dinner time. This one I believe closed by five o'clock the day we were there. So don't be expecting to do an evening bar crawl. We then walked down to Angel's Envy. It's on the fringe of downtown about a 10 minute walk or very quick Uber. Now, unlike most of the other spots in downtown, this one is a full production site and any and all Angel's Envy products are made in this location. We first started up on the second floor at their cocktail bar. Their cocktail bar is a little bit different than others and ended up being our favorite of the day. And that's because since they really only have two core bourbon products, they didn't focus really on those. The bar focused less on tasting flights and more on some really unique cocktail ideas. We tried riffs on an old fashioned, on a gold rush, and really enjoyed them. One of the things that makes Angel's Envy products unique is they're all finished bourbons. And they had some great examples of the various barrels. This is up on the second floor at the entrance to the bar, showing off how they finish some of their products. Now going down to the first floor, there was of course a very large gift shop and for a small fee of $10, you could schedule a tasting, which every about 15 minutes or so, they pull a few folks into a back room. They have a chocolate, they have their two core products, and they kind of explain the best way to taste it. A really quick and well done tasting experience. Day three started with us driving from downtown Louisville to Bardstown, about an hour drive. And this town had distilleries everywhere we looked. We started our day off at the Bardstown Bourbon Company. Good morning, day three. It is a beautiful sunny day, slightly green grass. You would never know that it is only 12 degrees Fahrenheit outside right now. It is absolutely frigid. We are here at Bardstown, in Bardstown, one of the newer, stops on the bourbon trail. You can tell just how new it is, how kind of sleek everything looks. We're here for a couple different things. We're doing a barrel thieving experience, which we'll show. And then uh, we're having lunch at their uh, 
lovely restaurant, but definitely not sitting outside here. So let's head in and check out Barstown. When it's not temperatures in the teens, the summer, this place has to be a rock and this would be such a cool place to get some bourbon to sit by the fire pits at night. But it's too cold outside inside. We checked in for our tour at the bar and they recommended their barrel aged old fashioned. They aged it in a barrel for a few months. I was allowed to take it on the tour. It was 9.45 in the morning. Sounded like a great way to start the day and also to keep me warm. It was really cold after all. As I said earlier in the video, we wanted to try to do something different at each distillery. At Bardstown, we did their barrel thiefing tour that took us inside one of their mini rick houses to try a few of their products straight from the barrel. We tried three in total, all different types and all at different spots in their aging process, which was a really good comparison. After our few samples, we were taken into a speakeasy style bar that was hidden deep inside the Rick House to sample a few other products. A really slick bar and honestly we knew very little about Bardstown Bourbon Company coming into the trip and we were very impressed with their products. Can't recommend them enough. Of course they have a giant gift shop as well as some distillery exclusives. We ended up trying one that was finished in wine barrels from France. This was one of the best bourbons I've ever had. Ended up having to get that as well as this rye. After our tour, we had lunch in their on-site restaurant. A really nice, slightly upscale spot located next to the gift shop. It does get quite busy. We made reservations in advance, something I would recommend. The menu felt a bit Southern inspired, and their bourbon list was very impressive, surprisingly containing a lot of competitors' products, though the pours were a little bit on the expensive side. Cocktail list was also quite fun. I started off with an apple bourbon slushy. The rest of the group got some of their winter cocktails, including boozy milkshakes. Boozy milkshakes was one of the main reasons we wanted to come here in the first place. Overall, the food and atmosphere were excellent. I got the highly recommended fried chicken sandwich and our group had praises for all their dishes. After our tour and lunch at Bardstown, we made the about 30 minute or so drive down to Maker's Mark. Now I heard Maker's was in the middle of nowhere and that was truly the case. We didn't have anything scheduled at Maker's so we started right near the main parking lot at their visitor center and cocktail bar. And they had a cat. That was really cool. The bar had both flights and cocktails. I opted for a flight to try a few things that were a little unique. When you describe something as sugar cookie, I can't say no. Despite that, they weren't my favorite of the trip, though the bar was really well done. The cocktail prices and flights were pretty reasonable as well. It's a short walk from the bar to the gift shop. And as you can see, it's quite the complex to walk around. What you're seeing in the video is how it looked when it was 10 degrees outside. And it was still pretty cool. I can only imagine walking around this place in the middle of summer with a cocktail in hand. Same could be said for most of the distilleries outside of Louisville. They were all really nice and would have loved to spend some more time exploring the, the sites themselves if it wasn't so cold or rainy. The gift shop was in a nondescript building and featured all the usual souvenirs you would expect. But the main reason I think most people come to Maker's Mark and the reason why I wanted to come here was to dip my own bottle. Now this is the cool part. It's for no additional charge. You can dip your bottle in their signature wax yourself. They make you wear some safety gear. They help you along the whole process. It's pretty quick actually. Again the best part is this doesn't cost extra. You just have to buy a bottle in the gift shop. And the prices for the bottles are exactly what you expect to find back at home. So it's not like they're upcharging. I bought the cheapest, which was only 20 bucks. That evening we stayed in Bardstown, the self-proclaimed bourbon capital of the world. They even had this really cool map in the ground that kind of laid out all the distilleries on the bourbon trail. Given the weather, the town was a little bit sleepy. So not a lot going on. It was also a Sunday night. Speaking of sleepy, we stayed at the Jailer's Inn, a bed and breakfast in the Old County Jail. Now you are able to stay in one of the jail cells, though those that's very limited and it books up very fast. 
we instead stayed in a, a really nice room in a different part of the complex. I'm going to show you off a few rooms that they walked us through um, as we were checking in. Really nice place. Bed was very, very comfortable. Had some nice communal living space as well. So if you're with another couple or a family, this might be a good spot where you can kind of Airbnb like. For dinner, we drove a short distance from the downtown Main Street area to Tugi's table, and this was excellent. We started with some fried chicken and seasoned peppers. For my main course, I went with the Wagyu short rib with some potatoes. Very, very tasty, great service, some great cocktails as well. If you're in Bardstown, highly recommend this is the place you make for dinner. Next to the Jailer's Inn in downtown is the Talbert Tavern another small inn with a restaurant and bar. It actually might be the world's oldest bourbon bar, having been around since 1779. And what you're seeing here is the actual part from 1779. Now they are remodeling the bar, so they just had a small temporary bar set up. We stopped in for a drink and the port prices were quite reasonable. We also got pecan pie for dessert, which was the perfect way to end the trip. Then things took a turn for the worst. Really hoping that at this point in the video, I would be showing you breakfast from the Jailer's Inn and every morning they do a tour for those who stayed over overnight of the jail. Fortunately, a snowstorm rolled in. It was worse than we anticipated. And as you can see here, it was starting to build up pretty fast. So we ended up hitting the road at 6 a.m. and had to miss out on that part of the Jailer's Inn experience. Overall, this was a really great trip, had tons of fun. Brought back a handful of bottles, tasted over 45 different bourbons and whiskeys, and more importantly, was able to really narrow down what type of bourbon and whiskey I like, and basically lower proof weeded bourbons. Let me know in the comments what bourbons you like so I can check them out myself. But really, whether you're passing through Louisville and only have time to stop at one of the gift shops or plenty of full multi-day trip, uh, I really think you'll like the setup. The trail has everything you want from tastings to cocktail classes to really great souvenirs and a lot of great food. Maybe you'll find something new that you like as well. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like and subscribe button for our other travel videos. Cheers!